1968. So after you came, you didn't see any Irish coming this oh, way? Oh no, or before me. John Kerry is, like down, down this valley, no. The other island, Butte, went to the cities, but none of them came out r rural and went after the land or anything like that, that I'm aware of. They did probably earlier, and the English back in eastern Montana, the better, the ones with money in Wyoming. You probably read about that, haven't you? Well, we have a few, there was, there's an Irish, there was an Irish settlement in Boulder Valley. Where? Boulder Valley. Boulder? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And that was about the 1860s or so. And then we have a good few con contributors to the project who are of Irish descent, dotted all over the state. Yeah. Um, but nothing like, I mean, the bulk of the move was from the ancient See the, the, in Antonic. Uh, yeah. Marcus Daly was born in Cabin. And he treated, he gave them, okay, you read it, the daily rate, the daily rate, D A L Y, it was a dollar more than anybody else. And he took care of his own. And he, bought, he went over to uh, 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 Drummond, not Drummond, Hamilton. Okay. Did you, with your own children, did you instill much of a sense of their Irish background in their oh own yeah. bringing? In what way? First off, I told them they were full-blooded Irish and never forget it. And I'll show you a picture of them before you go. They're awesome kids. They're smart. They didn't get it from me now. They probably got it from the mother. The shit was a 4-0 when she went back to college in Dillon. Um, I had them all speaking Irish at the table, Thurman Banya and Shukar, all that stuff, an Irish dance. I like to dance, she likes to dance, you know, I was telling you we did the Irish dancing and stuff. And we'd jump up in the middle of the floor and people thought we were crazy <laughs> and start dancing. And all my kids learned it. To dance. Every one of them, they love to dance still. Siobhan was in the hospital down in San Antonio. She joined the Air Force when she got out of college because she couldn't get a nursing job. There was something going on with Medicare and they were revamping it. And she got married a few months before she left, before the, she graduated. And uh, she was down in San Antonio, San Antonio, nursing when she joined the Air Force. And she's going down the corridor one day, I think it was a Patrick's Day or something, and she heard this Irish music coming out of some car, down some corridor and she goes running down. <laughs> and there's a couple of Irish, Irish American gals in the, uh, dancing or jumping around, whatever they were at, and Siobhan jumped in, oh yeah, we do that at our house all the time. So they know, they know they're Irish, they're, they know their background. So you have Siobhan and Bob, I have Bob, Siobhan, Michelle, and Alison. Did any of them stay around here? No. Those kids, Bob, Bob is in, in Great Falls. Uh, before you own 44,000 acres or something like that, and it was sustain, could sustain a family. He probably would have stayed ranching. He loved it. He loved like what like me hunt. He hunts like crazy and rides ropes. Don't know. He's doing all that. So still doing it. Uh, but the three girls, two of them are in Austin. Michelle is teaching in Nevada. And they would they would come back in the morning. Michelle would love to come back and probably live in Great Falls. Montana does not pay wages. She went down, she was, Michelle now was looking, she interviewed around here, she interviewed, I don't know where, several places. 
I had didn't like it. Didn't like the school, didn't like the, whatever was going on once you got out of college at that time. And someone told her go to go down to Nevada. And it was something like eighty percent of her class went straight from here to Nevada. Which is insane. Educate them here and they're out of state. And she's still down there. She's happy down there now. But they'd come back in the morning if they could get the same money. But when she went down to Nevada, are you looking at me? Is that thing on? Yeah, what's the Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, that's all right. When she went down there, she got $10,000 more, just starting, fresh out of college. And Mark, off that side and sticker ranch, he's 47 or 48 now. He never made the money she's making now. She's top, tougher grade. She did all those uh, upgrades from the, each summer. She's high on this. Scale, she can go K through 12. How's it made? But they'll come back tomorrow if she could get. And Siobhan probably would come. But she married a, a guy from, uh, he's off a farm, grain farm and cattle farm, uh, ranch, cattle, out of Glendale. And he's, uh, he works for Cisco Computers. Or I guess it's computers. But he's one of those computer guys. I never made the money that guy made. It's amazing. It's amazing. So you've, um, when you came to Montana in 1977, did you know you'd come to stay? Uh, by then I probably had pretty much, yeah. Does it feel like home? Hmm? Does it feel like home? Oh yeah, it's home now to me. I'm way too long. You, I told you before and I'm going to repeat myself again. You can never go back. And that's an old and true saying. You cannot go back. There's one guy that I went to school with. There are two guys. One is a farmer. The other chap went off to England and did well for himself over there. It was heavy, heavy, but I don't know why. It was heavy kind of contracting because I heard about him and afterwards, doing a lot of government contracts. We wound up very comfortable when he came back. He retired down the road in the, in the home place, at home. But there was no opportunities back there when we were, and right now there are none either, but all those guys here, my brothers, they all, it worked out good for them, they probably hit it lucky. They all, most of them built, some of them built, Mick, the younger ones, one of them, he came down to the Cape. They all came out to the States at different times. Yeah. Some of them visited. Mick came out and stayed on and off, built a few houses in the Cape, kind of laying them out, was established. And he went back. He bought that farm hill that I bought, that I get, uh, bought originally. Mm -hmm. And he got off before the crash came, some realtor in Wexford. Offered him 1.8 million, guaranteed. Did you, um, That's the fella there, uh, one, two, three, four. The genius. Yeah. So, but, some, so you, your brother John, does he stay in the Cape? He's on the Cape now. He went home, spent years at home, and came back. And he's talking about going back home again. But he's on the Cape right now. He's retired. How many of your brothers? Was, he, was it just the two of you that came to America? Or did any of the rest of them no. come to live? No. Ronnie. Where's Ronnie? See the guy on the right there with the white, light colored suit? Mm -hmm. He's married. He wasn't a roamer. He wasn't a drifter like me or the rest of the guys. He came over. And he was a machinist. He's retired. Oh, he's a security guard now in some... Uh, um, library where there were million dollar, multi-million dollar paintings. And he went back because he got bored at home. And he loves it. 
his gravy money now. I said, you never made so much money. Which he didn't, because, you know, he'd get paid more now than he was doing it. But he's, he's got it made. America's in good shape, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. But if I stayed home, it would have been the same. These guys did it. Paul and Terry, the two. See the red-headed fella? Uh -huh. And the guy beside him is Paul. They built home houses, a lot of houses at home. There's pictures of them in there. It's, the talent is there. The talent is back there. But who... That time, until this, until the Celtic Tiger started. Prior to that, those banks wouldn't give you a dime to get started. I, tr I put money in the bank when I went home that time, in the seventies, when I was going to stay. I got thinking one day, why don't I hold on to my money, and I borrow against it? And I was buying. I bought. You could buy a heap of land for a few thousand dollars that time. And a hundred thousand dollars by an apple lot. And they wouldn't give me a dime. I said, I got collateral, it's right there. And then a neighbor of mine came in, he was a farmer. And he wanted some money. I was talking to him and I just said talk and I didn't want to But I got onto that bank manager, or assistant manager, I can't remember his name, Brian something. I said, how come you give him money and you won't give me money against what I, I have in this, in this bank? Ah, sure, everything is ah, sure. Use up yours and then we'll, then we'll see what we can give you. But they weren't progressive at all. I was three years on Cape Cod and I had young guys coming around and introducing themselves, giving me their cards, they wanted my business. Because you come down to see me, and I started out the ones that were genuine. I got one bank and the manager, a nice guy, would, and you and Brennan had come down and you want to build a house. Okay, what are you doing for financing? Well, I, I suggest recommend this bank down there. And I remember one particular time, this guy, he was a minister out in New, uh, New Rochelle, New York. Can down to sell his lot, overlooking the water, which was worth a few bucks. And I talked him into building a house. Brought him up to the bank. I introduced him to the manager, Tommy, and I left him. I said, I'll leave you two guys started out. Next day I stopped in, coming back at, from work, I went in and Tommy, Tommy's office. I said, Tom, how did it go with that man yesterday? Oh, he said, he said, I'll say, we'll sign him up, fill out the application. He said, 12 inches high. He said, look at, the, I said, how many? I was ready to start in three weeks, another house. I was finishing up. I said, I'll be ready in three weeks. How's that? He said, see all them? He's at the bottom of that. And when I was there, he reached into the bottom and put, Put me on top. Now that's, do you think they'd do that for me in Ireland? They wouldn't even let me in the door. But I was bringing business to him all the time. Because I liked the man, I liked his approach, and I liked the bank the way they treated me. He t put me on top of that bunch. I never forgot him for that. Anytime I went to get back down, down to Cape, I was visiting. Go up and have a beer, go up and have feeded clams and a beer. Or lobster maybe. They go rich folks. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good to me. But those guys, they made it at home. But it takes work. Last question. Unless I've forgotten something and just please tell me. But what do you think being in Montana? What do you think your Irish heritage means? Here? Yeah. Either to you or in how you deal with people. 
My Irish heritage is, is everything to me. I'm very proud of it. Always will be. I'm a citizen since sometime in the 70s. Of the US. Of the US. But I'm also a citizen of Ireland. They can't take that away from me. And I know I'm respected down this valley. I was respected in the cave. And I always got along well with those people. And down here, you know, I talked their language too because it was a country chap, country guy. But um, like one guy said to me one day, he was giving out about Californians coming in here and buying up properties. And I thought it was, he was a rancher. I thought it was strange because I'm an import. I'm the only foreigner at the moment that I'm aware of in the valley. And I said, that's funny. I said, that guy from California, he's a countryman of yours. I said, I'm an import. Oh, hell, he says, you're, you're long enough up here. He said, you're one of us. And I thought that was the ultimate compliment, especially the guy he came from. So, if I can't live in Montana, I, I don't know, I couldn't go home, but I want to finish up my days in Montana. Love it. Look at that view. People are nice. I used to dance here in Fireman's Ball every year. Everyone knows everybody else, they help. Pretty country. The good, the good people around here. Would you get anything? Who do I send the bill to? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at now? Guys. Thank you, Bob. You're very welcome.